Greetings to all of my friends out there in YouTube. My name is Jeff Kowalk and you are watching Erudite Magic. As always, my friends, I truly appreciate you watching. We've hit one year and I want to thank you for being a part of this ride. I couldn't have done it without you. Today we're gonna to talk about a modern classic and the modern is in air quotes because it was published in 1991. Yes, we're all getting older, but I suppose it really beats the alternative, don't you think? We're talking about a book that's over 328 pages, over 500 illustrations. It's one of the best-selling magic books of all time. It's been through at least 15 printings. It's a complete guide to magic. It has something for everyone from cards to coins, parlor to close-up, essays, advice, you name it, it's got it. If you were paying attention when you clicked the thumbnail, you already know what this video is about. I am talking about The Magic of Michael Lamar. My history with this book goes back to when I was a young magician who was just starting to buy books. This was the mid 90s and by then I'd already been bitten by the magic book bug. I joined the Chaz Pro Book Club and I ordered two books, one of which was Bobo's New Modern Coin Magic and the other one was The Magic of Michael Amar. Every magician knew who Michael was in the 90s with all the L&L easy to master card miracles DVDs that were put out. He was the teacher of teachers on those and there's still a lot of great magic in those DVDs, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about his book. This is a complete course in magic from a master magician at the top of his game. Michael Lamar was larger than life to a young magician in the 90s. I'm telling you there's all kinds of stuff in this book, so let's walk a little bit through what does the book contain. It's kind of amazing to me that one magician can be so good at performing, teaching on video, and writing his own book. David Copperfield wrote the foreword and had some very complimentary things to say about Michael and his magic. And obviously I found it to be of great value to me and I wanna share it with you. If you saw the world's greatest magic specials or any other performance of Michael on late night TV where he appeared many times or other places, you've undoubtedly seen him perform his version of Di Vernon's cups and balls routine. It's taught here in the very first section of the book, along with the Vernon wand spin, which Michael claims was taught at least partially incorrectly in the Die Vernon Book of Magic by Lewis Ganson. Although I've personally never mastered the wand spin. Although I've personally never mastered the wand spin, it is taught here in sufficient detail to ensure that you can actually perform it. After teaching you quite thoroughly his cups and balls routine, he goes into a bunch of utility moves, some of which were contributed and some I believe are original to Michael himself. Everything from coins to cards, there's something for every kind of worker here, especially if you're a close-up style performer. His essays on magic that he shares with you in the book had a profound impact on me as a young magician especially the sections on supergroups, which is where he shares his view on something beyond the magic club, that you have a circle of friends who all bring something to the table and share something in common with a vision for creating extraordinary magic with highly entertaining premises and exquisite sleight of hand. This super group will be one that will push each other to go forward and share what needs to be shared. If you've ever been involved with one of these groups, and I have off and on throughout my career, you'll know the extreme value in being able to get honest feedback from people whose opinions actually matter to you. When I first read about this, I was not in a position to have a super group, but neither was Michael when he wrote about it, and yet it really helped take his magic to the next level. And it can help you too, if you're able to read, digest, and apply what you have here in this essay. His thoughts on training and practice are also invaluable to someone who wants to advance their own magic. He's going to teach you how to be better at performing by putting in the practice time that's necessary to be a great magician. And who wouldn't take advice from a world champion of magic? Yes, please. While the advice section is just as applicable today as it was back when this book was written, some of the book has fared less well with the passing of time. The section called Social Workers starts to show its age just a little bit. For example, there's a routine using a 
flip top from the top of a can where it goes through someone's finger. They don't make those kind of cans or pop tops anymore, so that's not really going to be something you can perform. There's a routine about snorting a cigarette, which really cracks me up in today's world. Obviously, the perception of smoking has changed quite a bit from the 80s when this material was being worked out by Michael and then published early in 1991. Now I would say if you're snorting a cigarette, that's not going to be the most popular thing at most places. But there still are some things that work in spite of their age, which includes pulling a silver dollar from a dollar bill with the plot about how uh, money used to be backed by silver. It's a nice little beat, and that's not to say there's nothing of value in this section, but there are a few things that just aren't gonna work today. I think one of the areas where this book really shines is that Michael has made his living by performing in so many places. He's done TV, he's done restaurants, stage, clubs, you name it. And the next section on restaurant work comes from someone who has lived in those trenches and knows what plays to people in a restaurant who are there to see magic as an ancillary item and really there to eat first. Many of his friends contributed to this section, including Bill Kalush with his ring on rubber band, and Michael gives his own take of that here. David Williamson contributed a coin and card routine, and Mike Gallo has a couple of coin items for your close-up restaurant work. There are a few nice pieces with Michael's version of the Chicago opener, a salt packet that changes into a pepper shaker as you set it down on the table, a coins through the table, a vanishing glass, and then you're back to some more items that won't play anywhere except a bar today, like a torn and restored cigarette. Two different versions. If you're looking for delightful books on magic like The Magic of Michael Amar, I recommend you check out Don's Magic and Books, who's sponsoring this episode. Don has a variety of books, and they're not just used books. He also stocks the newest releases from Magic's Greatest Minds today. But I love to look for those ones that are out of print and can only be found at a place like Don's Magic and Books. Regardless of whether you're buying something used or new, use the code Amar at checkout to save 10% off this week off any purchase $20 or more. Oh, and Don offers free shipping for anything over $20 anyway. I guarantee you're gonna be pleased with his selection, prices, shipping, and customer service. So check out donsmagicandbooks.com this week to save 10%. I'm not sure where the author decided to divvy up the items into these various sections, but the next section is called Reputation Makers, which are obviously items that Michael thinks have really set him apart from the competition and given him an edge when it comes to performing for lay audiences. It's a nice mix of close-up, walk-around, and parlor items. There are several that always piqued my curiosity, including two versions where cards end up frozen inside of ice cubes, including one that is signed. Definitely a reputation maker a la Max Molini. He gives you tips on how you can perform this in a walk-around environment and perform it multiple times throughout the night. There's a stand-up coin and bottle routine, and ironically, there's a pencil through quarter item. Why is that ironic? Well, I've already told you about all of the cigarette things, and that's the traditional item, was the cigarette through the coin, and instead he substitutes a pencil. Ah, just thought it was funny. He transitions from there for the reputation makers to things that are still really great and are designed for stand-up. A few of the items that stood out to me were his take on the needle through balloon, which was Billy the hypnotized balloon. A man's ring is borrowed. A balloon is hypnotized, forced to swallow the ring. It's inside the balloon. You shove a needle through the balloon and recovering the man's ring. There's a signed bill to light bulb, which is harder to do today when you don't have incandescent bulb. Ain't nobody wanting you to break their $10 LED light bulb. But if you're in the right place, I think this could be another reputation maker that if you can cause someone's bill to appear inside of a bulb that has just been lit in a light fixture, that's a reputation maker. You also have his classic silk to egg with the gag of the piece of silk stuck to your forehead and then pulled out of your forehead. Some of this is very silly and you can kind of see Michael's style as it began to evolve. The tricks themselves are great, but you're going to need to adapt them to your own performance style as you should be anyway. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a complete course in magic because there's a whole section in here on magic management. He shares his cue sheets, show sheets, 
project planners, and a booking sheet so that you can keep track of what you performed for whom, how many people, where were you, what was their response, how many minutes did it go, was there anything in the contract that was special, etc. Again, the book shows a little bit of its age because now there are a number of programs that can assist with this, but the information is no less relevant today than it was back then. It's just a matter of what tools do you want to use to track that. If you're already familiar with Michael Amar's DVDs, you probably remember the classic renditions that he created with the $100 bill switch and Crazy Man's handcuffs, among others. Those two are taught right here in the book in painstaking detail so that you can be performing them as Michael himself performed them. This is how I learned to do Crazy Man's handcuffs, and if I'm honest with myself, it's probably one of the reasons I actually bought the book was wanting to know that trick. If you have two rubber bands and fingers that work, it is an incredible demonstration of magic that can be repeated over and over from various vantage points to allow the audience a better look, culminating in a version where the rubber band penetrates the other rubber band in their hands. You can't ask for more than that, and it's all here in this book. The bonus chapter is just that. It's a smorgasbord of items, some interesting, some not so interesting to me. But what I did like was his incredible coins across, which David Copperfield referenced at the beginning of the book in the introduction, that there was a moment where the last coin fell from the air seemingly out of nowhere into David Copperfield's waiting cupped hands. And to him, that was a magic moment. He had no explanation and no words. And Michael tips the entire routine right here. It's not that hard to do. And it's a great in the hands, coins across using a participant's hands and can be performed basically surrounded. Wrapping up the book, there are several shorter sections on performing magic in competitions. How do you get ready for that? What do you need to do? Is it for everyone? What's your goal? He talks about eight principles for making magic memorable. And again, these had a profound impact on a young Jeff Kowalk who was learning his chops and reading everything he could about how other master magicians performed magic. The last little bit of the book is about negotiating for higher performance fees, and these are excerpts from his audio cassette release on the same subject. There's a lot to learn here, and if negotiating your fees is new to you, this information is invaluable. It will certainly help you elevate your game, especially when it comes to the business side of show business. This was a real blast from the past for me. As I mentioned, this is one of the first books that I bought. So when I look back at how I've gotten into magic books, this one was one of the first ones that took me on that ride. And it's a thrill to go back through it and revisit it with you. While it was one of the fastest selling books ever and went through at least 15 printings, I believe right now it's pretty tough to find a copy and it's kind of out of print. Now that Murphy's has bought the LNL stable of books, it's possible that it will be reprinted or in some way put out in a different format. So I'll try to keep you posted on that, but it is well worth seeking out a copy if you can find one for some super magic as well as great advice from a working pro and an award-winning magician. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below or send me a message. And until next time, all my erudite friends, keep reading.